Welcome to another video, A Walk with Phil. And I'm here in West Bromwich. I'm actually in Herbert Street, just near Tantony Estate. And this was a street that formed the basis of a murder that occurred in 1961. And it's still talked about today. And it's still unsolved. It began here at number 26, here in Herbert Street. And it was the house that, that Miss Dorothy Mills lived at with her adoptive parents. And what I'm going to try and do today is to try and reenact the very steps that Dorothy Mills would have taken on that fateful night on the 21st of January 1961. Um, now, there's always some conjecture as to whether she actually walked along here now on that night or she got to the end of this street and she was collected by car and taken to the tennis courts that were situated in Brat Street in West Bromwich. It's only a few streets away from here, uh, but if we're to say she walked, then this is the path she would more or less have taken on that cold, wet Saturday evening. Uh, so, yeah, so what we'll do is we'll continue to walk along here in Herbert Street. Now, at the top of Herbert Street, Dorothy Mills would have taken a right here in Hargate Lane. Now, it's at this point where she may have been collected by car. Uh, police did ask at the time for witnesses if anybody had seen whether she was collected by car and they gave a description of her and uh, but to but to no avail if she hadn't gone by car she would have more than likely walked along here in Hargate Lane but this is where we have a problem now because all the streets have changed since those days and Hargate Lane is now cut off cut adrift from the main town of West Bromwich by the expressway but she told her adoptive mother and father at the time when she was leaving the house that she was going to see a friend at the cinema and uh, but it took less than 24 hours to elapse before the body of Miss Mills was eventually found she was found sadly battered to death and the, it, the, behind a gate in the grounds of the Wesley Tennis Club in Brad Street. She'd been a champion at tennis as well. She was highly regarded. She also worked as a filing clerk at the local town hall in West Brom. But as you can see now, this is as bad as far as we can go. So Miss Mills would have probably crossed to that side of the road and continued on her way uh, along this particular stretch of road until she'd have reached Sandwell Road. She would have taken the path over there on the left and she'd have walked to Sandwell Road and which we can't get to directly now so I'm going to have to get round on the other side and we'll take up the story there. Yeah so we're on the opposite side now of uh, Hargate Lane. Now Hargate, as you can see in the distance where that green road sign is, that is the point of which Dorothy Mills would have walked from. And she would have walked across this way, where obviously now the expressway is cut it in two, and she would have walked along this particular stretch of road. There's still Hargate Lane. This is where Hargate Lane ended and it met Mill Street to my right and to my left would have been San well ahead of me Sandwell Road now but Sandwell Road would have carried on all up here and it's Sandwell Road would have curved round this particular this particular part up there. As Dorothy Mills hadn't returned home overnight uh, Dorothy Mills's parents became concerned, so they notified West Bromwich Police Station 
they reported her missing. And it was around about here in Providence Place, which would have been part of Sandwell Road at the time. And again, it is very difficult to determine exactly. But it was around about this part here where a handbag was discovered. And at around about midday on the 22nd of January 1961, he took it to the police station. Uh, but it was around about this particular part of Sandwell Road where he was discovered. About around about 350 yards from the end of Bratt Street near the Wesley Tennis Club. Dorothy Mills would have walked along this particular part of Sandwell Road because just at the bottom here is the junction of Sandwell Road and Bratt Street and Bratt Street was the place where she was heading to which was the Wesley Tennis Club. Uh, now as I said earlier there is some conjecture whether she was actually driven here by car or whether she walked it but for the sake of of saying she walked it this is the route she would have taken. Okay so now we've reached Bratt Street here on my left as we turn into Bratt Street and yeah we continue up Bratt Street now again things have changed massively since 1961 um, here there was a works department of the council. When she was discovered here in Bratt Street. They've discovered that her head was battered. Uh, the instrument used was probably a hammer. And they pinpointed the actual death on the night of the 21st of January at around 8.45 p.m. So the police then had to ask what, was hap what happened to those three lost hours between six o'clock and 8.45 and who had she been with and uh, of course then the police started to take statements from many of her friends and they made a lot of house to house inquiries in the local area there was posters appearing asking for help and placed in the windows of local shops cinemas the dance halls uh, well over 700 people or so were interviewed in the first month of the investigation and they still failed to find any clear clues as to who had actually done the murder. It also discovered, it didn't help because they found that Miss Mills had actually a secret life, even kept secret from her adoptive parents. Uh, she used a different name when she was out and about and she was three months pregnant. Still, the police started doing a lot of investigative work they even made appeals for information at the Albion ground, the West Bromwich Albion Football Club ground and at Molyneux. And they also had a, an inquiry which was held at the Town Hall on March the 17th, 1961. And, but unfortunately even that didn't make any difference as to who could have done this grisly murder. At the end of the month on the 26th of January, it was, it was said that the caretaker at the Wesby Tennis Club had actually seen Dorothy return on a few occasions on those on the evenings to meet with whoever it might have been. The police began to do thorough searches for the, the actual murder weapon and across the road here, it used to be the cemetery to Christ Church and the police made a lot of, invest a lot of searches within the cemetery to see if they could see, to also discover the weapon. One of the chief suspects of this murder was somebody called Jack Mason, who was actually the chairman of the tennis club, of the Wes Wesley Tennis Club. He denied any involvement in the murder, even though he even shared a holiday with Dorothy Mills. And he, didn't, he stated that he didn't even know that she was pregnant. And the news of it even shocked him. 
he said he had no idea. It was said the police interviewed eight and a half thousand people and taken statements from nearly a thousand. But they regret to say that nothing we have learned during our inquiries has revealed any evidence whatsoever that could justify charging any person for the murder. Suffice to say that uh, Jack Mason, who claimed he was the friend of the murder's tennis girl, Dorothy Mills, re resigned his chairmanship with immediate effect from the club, Wesley Tennis Club. There was a couple of entrances to the tennis courts. Uh, this is one of them. Uh, there was two tennis courts at the rear of Brad Street. This is one of the entrances to them. Uh, this would have been the second one. The first one would have been to the left as I reached the end of this alleyway. The walls along some of the gardens here are relatively unchanged from 1961. As you can see ahead of me now, there's where there would have been guard, there would have been a tennis court, just a bit further on where the hedges were, where that where that building is just there with a the white door. Uh, yeah, the tennis court would have been around there somewhere. Okay, so take you back along Brat Street. Here, these are new properties, Peppercorn Place. Uh, some, this would have been the area here where this car park is. This is the middle section of the two of the two tennis courts um, again it's going to be hard to pinpoint them exactly uh, these are all there's new fencing there there's new wall there but beyond that wall would have been the second tennis court and the tennis court that we're looking at is the one beyond that fence, that new fence there. We go to the entrance now of the first tennis court where Dorothy Mills was murdered in January 1961. And now it's all, everywhere's changed along here now since 1961. But here we have the, the entrance to the first tennis court. Here, this was the entrance. This is where Dorothy Mills would have gone down and we've still got one of these original, original sign here on the wall. Parking in this access way is strictly forbidden. Not sure how long that's been there but it does seem it's been there a while. Um, this is where the police would have carried the gate where Dorothy Mills was discovered underneath of and as we walk now towards this alleyway you can see the some gates has been put in place with pedestrian access now forbidden uh, look through there and you can see ahead of me would have been a kind of still this continuous pathway this pathway that you can see here that would have carried on, there wouldn't have been grass there, it would have gone right to the bottom and you can see there's like hedges ahead I believe. You got to the end there and there was uh, gates at the top there where she was murdered and uh, yeah the tennis court if you did just turn right at the very top there, turn right there would have been the first tennis court which would have included tool shed and a small pavilion. But sadly, we can't access this alleyway any longer. Okay, folks, so what we'll do now, we'll just, uh, we'll just see if we can find anything 
on the car park, which is next to this, if it should have been next to the tennis course. As you can see, now there's a large car parking area where the corner of the road at the bottom of Brat Street would have been a pickle factory and the council works. Um, now we've got the car park here, but you can see ahead now where the hedges, all these hedges here. Um, that's the side of the alleyway which we've just seen. I'm going to go to the back, the rear of it, and see if there's any evidence of um, of what once was in 1961. You can see there's this uh, newish type wall. There's some old bricks still here and uh, yeah you can see the wall would have carried on up here yeah you can see this is where the alleyway would have continued and again we of course we will always find it difficult to know exactly where the pavilion and the the pavilion and the tool shed would have been where the body was discovered this is where the alleyway would have come to, this is where the pavilion and the tool shed probably would have been and uh, yeah this is where Dorothy Mills probably met her demise on that fateful night in January of 1961. And we take you around here you can see now we've got a car park here many of the workers at Travel Lodge, the West Bromwich Building Society, headquarters and a few of other office buildings that we've got around here. After the inquiry into the murder the jury returned a verdict that Dorothy was murdered by a person or persons unknown. So that was that. Um, sadly the murder still remains unsolved. Uh, I don't. I doubt very much now that anybody will have any other information to give in order to finally solve the murder of Dorothy Mills all those years ago on the 21st of January 1961. Um, it's been difficult to actually locate the actual spots of where it happened. Uh, so many things have changed since those days in terms of the layer to the roads and the buildings that have been demolished. But anyway, if you like the video, then hit the like button and hit subscribe and hit the notification bell for new videos. And I'll see you on the next one.